Season's beatings and a smashing new year. That's what Hollywood's new Santa is wishing everyone on his naughty and nice list in the all-new movie Violent Night. The David Harbour films become an overnight sensation, grossing a sweet $29 million at the global box office. So let's check out what made the movie this successful, and how the film's Christmas traditions differ from what its cast is used to celebrating. Let's start with Violent Night's numbers to date. You ain't driving, are you? I steer a little, but the ranger do most of the work. With 3,682 opening theaters on its list, a $20 million budget, and some stellar casting choices, Violent Night entered the holiday movie market as a pretty crazy idea for a Christmas movie. And what do you know, the magic of the season worked its charm on the film and has made it one of the top grossing movies of the season, just under MCU's Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. One of the few new wide studio releases during December's first weekend, the Universal and 87 North flick is about a magical Christmas night where a gang of thieves breaks into a a wealthy household only to find out that Santa is the protector of the place. And let us tell you, this Santa is no saint because he's ready to punch, maim, and even blast the bad guys on his naughty list out of his way so he can get back to his usual duties again. Sounds like an out-of-the-box idea, all right, and it's being loved by audiences all over the world because as of now, it's reached $29 million worldwide with $20 million domestic and 8.7 million international numbers. The movie, which has opened in 72 markets, is grossing at the top in the the USA, UK, France, Germany, Mexico, Australia, and the Netherlands. Starring John Leguizamo, Alex Hassel, Leah Brady, Cam Gionne, and others, the movie earned a B-plus cinema score, with a rating of 7.1 on IMDb and 71% on Rotten Tomatoes. Hold up, why is the movie so famous? Because it's just crazy enough to be fun. Remember when Nightmare Before Christmas came out, a cartoon about Santa being kidnapped just so Halloween could take over Christmas? It was a crazy idea, but it worked, because, well, why not? Similarly, if you look at this movie, its story's almost as insane, with a Santa who's been given the task to protect a family, who's rich enough to protect themselves, mind you. This movie's a play over all the Father Christmas rituals, amping them up to about 500% with some explosives and expletives peppered in. For an audience who's got either superhero flicks or arthouse films to digest, such a movie not only works, it's a miracle in a season of miracles. Plus, it's got David Harbour in it, who's already won our hearts with Stranger Things and Black Widow, so there's that. Too. In fact, people have been calling it a gift that delivers exactly what it promises. It's a gore-filled, snowy action movie that still manages to deliver the hallmarks of what a Christmas movie should have. It's got a kid who believes in Santa, a Santa who believes in getting his gifts out into the world no matter how tired he is of the job, a Mr. Scrooge who's set to destroy everything in his way, and some beautiful decorations that soon turn into props for Santa to destroy his enemies with. So like, what's not to love about this film? Also, here's how fans are reacting to the movie. They love it. Some fans are even saying that this was the best dumb fun they've had watching a holiday movie. Others are saying how this is going to be a repeated watch every year. But all in all, the reviews are just great. Everyone seems to love the unconventional way the movie explores the season, and how it has just the right amount of Christmas within it to make it a good holiday-themed film. Also, everyone's praising Harbour and Leguizamo, whose characters are the two main Christmas archetypes no movie can work without. And in this one, they play their characters to perfection. The disgruntled Santa is as believable as the angry Christmas-hating Scrooge who, it seems like, was given just one instruction, to act as spoiled and entitled as possible. And finally, one thing that everyone keeps talking about is the endless Easter eggs the movie's got across the plot. Wait, did you just say Easter eggs? You heard right. The movie's a mixed bag of original and some copied ideas from the popular holiday movies we've all come to love. This includes some gore-filled traps inspired by Home Alone's Kevin, a communication channel between the two main characters just like they did in Die Hard, and some pretty familiar deaths that strongly remind you of Die Hard 2. Even movies like A Christmas Story, Scrooge, Mad Santa, Elf, A Christmas Carol, and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Sounds like the movie hasn't shied away from borrowing from its predecessors, but the fact that it's still an original work despite all that is one that makes the movie work. Now, how's the cast reacting to its success? The movie, which originated via a Die Hard Santa version sketch by writers Josh Miller and Pat Casey, made some of its cast members pretty uncomfortable at first. One of them was David Harbour himself who mentioned how bizarre he thought the idea was when he found out about it. Speaking to the press at the film's premiere, he said he was pretty doubtful, thinking, what the hell is this film? 
And will it even work? Obviously, if we were pitched an idea about a mercenary Santa who had a very different life 10,000 years or so back and had skills to fight bad guys and was depressed on top of it all, we'd be doubtful too. But then, once he met the producers and the director, Tommy Wakola, he started getting excited about the movie. He started thinking that if the film could get it right and the audience liked it, the movie could be quite a leap. Then we have our man John Leguizamo, who had doubts of a very different kind. For him, the movie was pretty much a done deal, except that he was nervous about how he'd look in front of Harbour. David, who's pretty much a method actor, had gained weight for the film, and with his 6 foot 5 height could easily tower over everyone in the movie, just like he does in the trailer. So for John, it was important that he looked at the part of an angry Scrooge who could take over Santa without looking like a wimp. What's more, he even shared his own scary Christmas traditions. No, don't worry, his traditions don't include a bloody Santa and his need to murder people. Instead, John mentioned how in his family, Christmas presents weren't too easy to earn, just like Trudy in the film, except his hurdles didn't include homicidal villains, but parents who used to ask him to excel at something before he earned his gift. Like what, you ask? Well, if he wanted a bicycle as a gift, he had to complete sections of the encyclopedia months before the year's end so his parents could deem him worthy of the gift. Doesn't sound too bad, but hey, now we gotta work for our Christmas presents too? Luckily, John isn't the same type of parent. Instead, he believes kids deserve unconditional gifts during this season, so he doesn't ask his kids to complete crazy tasks before Christmas Eve. He just showers them with presents and the same kind of love he used to get from his folks. Moving on, there's also his list of Christmas movies. While talking about traditions, John mentioned how his family celebrates the event with lots of food and dancing. He also has his list of favorite Christmas movies. And no, Die Hard is not one of them. Instead, he thinks Deer Hunter is more like his type of Christmas film. When asked why, he just said he'd watched it once with his kids and it's kind of become part of their seasonal list. If you asked us, we think his Christmas traditions are super wholesome and heartwarming. And thankfully not the same as his real-life character, who's got no love to give to this snowy magical season. Good on you, John Leguizamo. Good on you. Finally, will there be a Violent Night 2? Guys, the movie just came out. Give it a rest before you ruin it with franchising plans. But if you seriously think about it, this film could branch out into different directions, taking our depressed Santa to more unwilling adventures where he really doesn't want to go. We'd also love to see him bicker some more with his reindeer. So is that something set to happen? The execs and writers have a decided yet, but David Harbour has said that he'll be up for it if the audience loves it, and we already know they do, so maybe that's something we can look forward to in the future. For now, though, be prepared to deck your halls with blood and gore because this Santa isn't here to give any naughty kids some gifts. Instead, he's out for a kill, so you better not do anything to anger him because we bet you don't want to get smacked around by a candy cane this holiday season. And that's a wrap for this video. What do you think about this latest unconventional holiday flick? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!